I was visiting our storage unit recently and I just picked up a one of the tubs and opened it up to see what was in there and I found this. This is Irma Bombeck's day by day calendar from 1996. I actually bought this on the half price rack or even like 25% only rack in an office supply shop in Chicago uh, in January or February of 1997. I thought, well, that's unusual because in 1996, Irma Bombeck died. And I thought, well, that would be interesting to find out what happened, what Irma Bombeck says happened on the day she died. So I'm going to open this up at the end of the video. Irma Bombeck was a homemaker from Ohio. In the early 1960s, her somewhat wry, humorous commentary about her home life won her a column in a local paper. Her popularity grew. Her column, Wit's End, became syndicated, ultimately being published in over 900 newspapers across North America. She was a successful author of 15 books, including If Life is a Bowl of Cherries, What Am I Doing in the Pits, and The Grass is Always Greener Over the Septic Tank. Irma became a television correspondent for ABC's Good Morning America as well. The subject again, her humorous take on family life. A couple of my favorite quotes. My idea of housework is to sweep the room with a glance. Encourage independence in your children by regularly losing them in the supermarket. And the best, seize the moment. Remember all those women on the Titanic who waved off the dessert cart. At the age of 20, she was diagnosed with a hereditary kidney infection that was untreatable and uncurable, called polycystic kidney disease. Her father had succumbed to the disease when she was nine years old. She and her husband, Bill, moved to Arizona in the early 1970s, where they stayed for 25 years. In the early 90s, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and had a mastectomy. She donated the entire advance from her book, I Want to Grow Hair, I Want to Grow Up, I Want to Go to Boise, to cancer research. Shortly after that, her kidneys began to fail. She was put on dialysis four times a day. According to one published source, she could have moved to the top of the transplant list, but chose to wait her turn. She went public with her condition. She said at the time she feared a negative obituary. What a crummy exit to have someone say, yeah, I remember she had kidney disease and cancer. I want people to remember 29 years of work and a line of books in the library to give them a laugh. Irma was on the kidney transplant list for four years. One kidney had to be removed and the other one ceased to function. Finally, in April of 1996, she was given a kidney transplant at the University of California, San Francisco Medical Center. After the operation, she acquired post-operative pneumonia and jaundice from gallbladder disease. She died of heart failure on Monday, April 22, 1996. She was 69. According to one tabloid, Irma died with a smile on her lips, a faint but radiant smile, as though she had a private joke about dying. Her funeral was open to the public and held at the St. Thomas the Apostle Church in Phoenix and attended by 1,200 people. Bishop Thomas O'Brien, the officiant, said, If there was anyone I could bring back from the dead, it would be Irma. God knows what she would write about that experience. So here's a memorial booklet that we used to have on display until we departed tours for Irma's funeral. And there's a nice portrait of funeral of uh, Irma. And this is the order of service. This took place at the St. Thomas the Apostle Church in Phoenix, Arizona, on Monday the 29th of 1996 at 10 a.m. You can see who the celebrant was, musicians, gift bearers, pallbearers. There's Phil Donahue, Bill Keane, the... Uh, famous illustrator. Uh, these are different friends of the family and dignitaries from Arizona. And uh, you can here see the music and uh, the homily, gospel, etc., and communion. And the closing song was City of God by Dan Shute. Immediate, immediately following the Mass, there'll be a reception in the Doran Hall hosted by the Arizona Kidney Foundation, AKF Women's Board in St. Thomas Ladies Sodality. Now this is a very nice uh, sentiment, a little story that was shared by Irma's husband. And um, I'm just going to leave this on here. If you want to pause it and read it, uh, feel free. I'm not going to read it out to you.
And uh, lastly, it's a very nice drawing, very sad drawing done by Bill Keane, the uh, illustrator of uh, Family Circus. At that point, burial arrangements were not disclosed. Irma's body was flown back to Dayton, Ohio for burial in Woodland Cemetery. Although almost all of her family moved out west, they decided that a hometown burial would be more appropriate. It's a place where she and her husband grew up, met, and married, and began their family and their careers. About five weeks later, on Monday, June 3rd, there was a brief graveside ceremony. About 70 people attended. There was a simple wood casket adorned with a crucifix. This photograph, by my friend Roger, was taken shortly after Irma's burial. Her grave was marked with simple shrubbery until two years later. A six foot by five foot tall boulder was brought back by flatbed truck from Phoenix, Arizona to mark Irma's grave. Her husband said he wanted a piece of Phoenix at his wife's grave to commemorate the 25 years they spent together in Arizona. Irma once said, When I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and could say, I used everything you gave me. Now, Irma Bombeck died on October... Whoa, I just, I just yeah. got nailed. I just got oh. nailed by a hummingbird. Um, so I've had this thing for probably 20, almost 25 years, and I've never opened it. Now, Irma died on April 22nd of uh, 1996 in San Francisco, and she's buried in Ohio, as you just saw. And, uh, but I've never opened this, so I thought, well, what did Irma Bombeck say was going to... What was her thought of the day? Well, on the day that uh, she died, she couldn't possibly have known. So, Irma Bombeck's 1996 calendar. All right, so she died on April 22nd, so let's find it. April 19th, 2021. Monday, April 22nd. I hate to buy things that don't show. You could fork out a couple of big bills and have a septic tank so clean you could cook in it. But does anyone care? Plant a few geraniums in the side yard by the garbage can and people go crazy. Her final thought. <laughs> she couldn't have known that. April 22nd, 1996. So rest in peace, Irma Bombeck. Thank you so much to the people who are sponsoring my page and Meyer. Rachel Reed, Gabrielle Gamache, Martha Santos, Josley Smith, Brandy, and Brenda. I so appreciate you. P please like this video if you do. Please subscribe if you feel like it. I'd certainly appreciate it. And thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And until next time...